the New Age religion will have a worldwide leader, an individual that they call Lord Maitreya. This individual has not made his public appearance yet, but the New Agers claim that he is on the earth at the present time. They claim that he came to live with the Asian community in East London, England, in July, 1977, by descending from his ancient retreat in the Himalaya Mountains, along the border of India and Tibet. They further believe that his imminent emergence into full public view is assured. They also claim that this individual is the one that the Christians call Christ, the Jews call the Messiah, the Buddhists call the Fifth Buddha, the Hindus call Krishna, and the Muslims call the Imam Mahdi. In other words, all of the major religions of the world are awaiting the arrival of this one individual. It is their claim that this one individual living now in London is the one expected by all of these religions. And he is on the earth now, patiently waiting for the appointed time to reveal his existence to the peoples of the world. He will apparently assume the leadership of all of these religions, and when he does, he will create a one-world religion. The New Agers have written that in the esoteric tradition, previously defined as being intended for or understood by only a chosen few, as an inner group of disciples or initiates. The word Christ is not the name of an individual, but the name of an office or function within the spiritual hierarchy of masters. The masters are a group of perfected men who have guided human evolution from behind the scenes for centuries. And they believe that this Lord Maitreya is that Christ. Manly P. Hall has written of this individual by identifying him as the way, the truth, and the life which, coming to every life, redeems all who accept it. Tex Mars has quoted this individual as saying, My army is ready for battle, my masters of wisdom and myself at the head. That battle will be fought for the continuance of man on this earth. Rest assured that my army shall triumph. It appears that the battle to be fought between the followers of Lord Maitreya and the rest of humanity is still in the future. But at least one of the participants has an army already prepared. One who claims to have seen the birth in a vision of someone who seems to fulfill the requirements of this Maitreya was astrologer Jean Dixon. Her major claim to being a prophet is her prediction, reportedly made before the event, of the assassination of President John Kennedy in 1963. However, her credentials were dealt a serious blow in 1968, when she also prophesied that the Soviet Union would be the first to put a man on the moon. Another of her prophecies was that the Republican Party would be victorious in 1968, and it was with the election of Richard Nixon, a Republican, but she also predicted that within the following decade, 1970 to 1979, the two-party system as we have known it will vanish from the American scene. She further predicted that Richard M. Nixon had excellent vibrations for the good of America, and would serve the country well. Those who question her inability to correctly predict that America, not the Soviet Union, would become the first to place a man on the moon, and that the two-party system has not vanished from the scene, and that President Nixon apparently did not have good vibrations for this nation, and would later be removed from office by the event commonly referred to as Watergate, can only presume that she must have been given inside information about the assassination of the President Kennedy. And that would account for her knowing, at least in that event, the true future. Secondly, one can only wonder why this non-profit should be listened to about anything after her appalling record on prophecies, but there is reason to believe that she might have been asked to write an account of this vision, of an important birth by the New Age religion, because they wanted the official imprimatur of someone commonly referred to as a prophet. In other words, her prophecy might have been written to legitimize his claim to be a man-god, so that when this individual made his public appearance himself, the public would marvel at the fact that his birth had fulfilled a prophecy. But, in any event, Ruth Montgomery wrote a book about her, entitled The Gift of Prophecy, in which she wrote about the very revealing and intriguing vision that Jean Dixon allegedly had. The vision which Jean considers the most significant and soul-stirring of her life, occurred on February 5, 1962. She saw the brightest sun she had ever seen. Stepping out of the brightness were a pharaoh and Queen Nefertiti. Remember here that these two individuals were Egyptians. This will become significant later on in this study. The couple thrust forth a baby, as if offering it to the entire world. Jean looked at the baby and then said, according to the author, I knew here is the beginning of wisdom. So what Ruth Montgomery wrote can be summarized as follows. A sun deity gives the world a child, from Egypt, who possesses enormous wisdom. And this event allegedly took place on February 5, 1962. The interpretation of these symbols will be discussed later, and their alleged significance will be developed. Jean then says. A child, born somewhere in the Middle East shortly after 7 a.m. Eastern Time, on February 5, 1962, will revolutionize the world. Before the close of the century he will bring together all mankind in one all-embracing faith. Mankind will begin to feel the great force of this man in the early 1980s, and during the subsequent 10 years the world as we know it will be reshaped into one without wars and suffering. 
his power will grow greatly until 1999. This year is extremely significant as will also be developed, at which time the peoples of this earth will probably discover the full meaning of the vision. So, according to this vision, a child, born on February 5, 1962, will grow up to bring a one-world religion onto the face of the earth, and his efforts will be successful in 1999. The New York Times newspaper ran three consecutive articles on the conjunction of five wandering stars, the sun, the moon, and an invisible body that astrologers call Kedu, starting on February 4, 1962. The first article stated that the various bodies moved into rough alignment in the constellation Capricorn at 7.05 a.m., New York time, and that they would remain in that alignment until 7.17 a.m., New York time, Monday. However, the article went on to say that most of the people in India became alarmed, because most astrologers were making predictions of disasters. There were a few astrologers who were predicting good for the world as a result of this alignment, but few Indians appeared to be paying them much heed. Astronomers did not consider the event to be rare, however, and the article went on to report that the same configuration had occurred several times in the past, the last time being in April, 1821, and then it occurred twice. The article reported that Dr. Kenneth L. Franklin of the Museum of Natural History, Hayden Planetarium in New York, had commented that that year does not seem to be a year of any remembered disasters. He was then quoted as saying, and that year isn't famous for anything, as far as I know. Dr. Franklin also commented on the body the astrologers called Kedu. He speculated that it may be some sort of astrological addition used to make everything come out right. He then added that he believed Kedu to be the invisible planet that is frequently taken into account in astrological reckonings, but that he had no idea how it was possible to keep track of something that no one could see. The Times carried another article the next day, Monday, February 5, 1962, and it repeated the concern of the Hindu astrologers. In fact, that headline read, Hindu astrologers still say it's doomsday. And the sub-headline read peaceful beginning of planetary event is viewed gravely. The third article in the series ran on Tuesday, February 6, 1962, and carried the headline Doomsday in India Uneventful. The article reported that the Indian astrologers had predicted a variety of disasters, earthquakes, tidal waves, devastating fires, and warfare, to name a few, but that none of these events had occurred. Furthermore, the article reported that Hindu priests had claimed that the reason nothing had happened was because their prayers to their god had been answered. But, none of these three articles mentioned the birth of anyone on these three days. Furthermore, none but a few astrologers had believed that something good was going to happen, and that only a few in India had listened to them. Only Jean Dixon, another astrologer, had seen a vision of something beneficial, in this case the birth of a baby full of wisdom, at about the midpoint of the three-day affair. One can only wonder if, once again, she missed the mark, and was involved in another error. In any event, these people claim that the Lord Maitreya will appear shortly to the entire world, and start everyone off on a road to a world religion. Helena Petrovna Blavatsky in her book entitled, The Secret Doctrine, called him, the Dragon of Wisdom. So it appears that the one call that Jean Dixon made that appears to match other comments, is her statement that the baby she saw in her vision, was full of wisdom. If the baby she claimed to have seen in her vision was Lord Maitreya then she was right, because others have claimed that Lord Maitreya is full of wisdom. However, there is still reason to believe that she was given inside information by some New Agers, who wanted to have this Lord's birth prophesied, so that when he did surface, the New Agers could claim that his birth had been a fulfilled prophecy. So the world awaits the visible appearance of Lord Maitreya. This was everything inside me channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. Stay safe and healthy. Thanks for watching.